We are at San Diego Comic Con 2022. We are live and back in action. I am KB here with the beat. Super thrilled to be a backstage for the brand new Paramount and E1 film, Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves. We are going to talk to all of your faves. I am talking about Chris Pine, Reggae Jean Page, uh, Michelle Rodriguez, and uh, the fantastic Hugh Grant. So get ready for some entertaining, fun, and favorable conversations with the best. So my question is for both of you, for these newbies coming into the franchise, the first timers, now that you guys are the experts having worked on this film, you're the D&D experts, what would be in your D&D manual? And I'll start with you, Chris. Like, what should people know? Um, just to let go. There are a lot of rules and regulations that I don't really follow. I don't like board games, quite honestly. I just I get bored too easily and there's too many rules. But you'll play ultimately with someone who knows what they're doing and just listen to what they're saying. And eventually you just, you're just playing make believe. It's just saying yes and. It's like, it's like good improv. You're just like, okay, yeah, great. I'm on a boulder and there's a dwarf and then an evil spirit comes and then there's a river I have to jump over. I'll jump over the river, capture the dwarf, and onward and onward and onward and onward. What about for you, Hugh? I don't know. I've never played it, and it sounds terrifying to me. I, <laughs> I would avoid it like the plague, I think. <laughs> Honestly, I have never played it either, and that's yeah. why I need your manual, you guys yeah. being the experts now, just because I'm like, what do I need to do to get myself into this and try it out before the phone goes out? <laughs> get your friends together, get a bottle of wine, and go to town. It's really fun. Ooh, love really, it. really fun. Beat. Yeah. Get the beat. Get the beat. <laughs> Okay, so tell me, I have to know, what was it about Holga that you were just like, yes, I need to be a part of this crazy D&D &D world on screen? Viking, Viking, Viking. <laughs> Who the hell doesn't want to be a Viking, dude? I've played with runes my whole life. I have tons of friends in Norway. What else do I need? <laughs> there it is. We don't need anything else, okay? So how much of this, I'm, I'm going to have to ask, was collaborative process between you and and Jonathan and John, I don't know if you guys called them like John Squared Jonathan or what. Jonathan right, right. is our name for it. Our okay, name. I had a dragon called Jonathan. And so one head is a litigator and then the other head is the creative funny guy and then, then both of them had attention to detail always. And they'll keep doing takes until they get exactly what they're looking for. Oh my goodness, so how much were you able to just kind of live free with Holga, you know, I mean, somewhat under the direction of, of Jonathan? Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Most of the characters that I played, um, you know, throughout my life have been very close to who she is or what she stands for. So all I had to do was remove the Jersey accent as much as possible, <laughs> which was, by the way, kind of hard. I mean, every now and then they had to, they were like, Michelle, you're not in Jersey. Can you say that again without the Jersey accent? I was like, uh, okay, I'm trying here, man. Well, I love it. Listen, I cannot wait for everyone to see this. I mean, honestly, those clips we saw are hilarious, and I they look so like action-packed and driven. Man. Can't wait to see it. of love, man. And if you saw all the talent, bro, from the art department to the guys who were doing animatronics to, to the wardrobe, I mean, the wardrobe is just sick. Everybody just brought it, and we would, they, they all dropped mics like, yeah, labor of love. I'm like, this is cool. I don't mind working on a production like this. Oh, my God, we'll love it. So thank you so much for chatting with The Beat. Really appreciate it. Okay, so I have to ask, can you tease or at least set the scene for maybe the most insane stunt that you do in this movie? Um, <laughs> there's a couple of them, and they're linked together, and the preview you have is right at the end of the trailer. Okay, okay. Uh, and my next question is this. If you had three words to kind of just describe your character's journey throughout this film, what would they be? Ooh. You're just coming at me with actually good questions. Um, three words to describe the character's journey in the film. Um, virtuous, unexpected, and... Mm, it's it's too wide. I can't do three. Virtuous and unexpected. Okay, okay, that's totally fine. Well, Good thank. You. <laughs> Maybe that's the third word. The third word. The third word is swords. Virtuous, unexpected swords. <laughs> yep. Well, perfect. Well, thank you so much for chatting with the beat. Absolutely, cannot wait for the fans to see this. An unexpected sword. Thank you.
So first question, we see Dork, I mean, Dork is kicking behind in some of that footage that we saw. I love to see it. So give us three words that you feel like really kind of define her journey in this film. Oh God, three, three words. Um, Jesus, I don't know. I don't know. I have to think about it. Uh, three words to describe her journey. Um, exhausting. Um, uh, she has a lot of regret throughout the entire show. <laughs> um, let me see. And um, I suppose rewarding? Is that a good, good, good word? I'm, it's good. It's good enough for me. Listen, it's making me more excited to see it. So, I mean, you mentioned in the panel that you started playing D&D &D in high school. So, you know, how after kind of working on this movie and working on this film, how has it changed how you play new campaigns? Um, well, when I first started, uh, I knew nothing about it. So um, it was very rough at first. And all of my other friends were very new at it. So you could tell with us playing there was like no uh we were just kind of off the walls uh, it was kind of hard to wrangle us in but i think after a while i kind of got used to it and now playing D and everything i think it's kind of uh i had to do a lot of research in order to play this so uh i've actually kind of learned how to play D and D because of this show and because of this movie so um now I think I, I want to do it again and maybe even DM maybe and um, at this point I, I'm a little bit more prepared than <laughs> the first time I ever played it. So. Ooh, I love that. I love that. Okay, and so finally, you know, my last question, what is it that you, you know, you felt the energy in Hall H. Obviously fans are super excited to see this film when it comes out early next year. What are you most looking forward to that you, you know, that the fans are going to see? Like, what do you hope that they take away from this? Oh, Jesus. Uh, I don't know, maybe it'll uh, uh, inspire them to to uh, play D&D &D together. Or, uh, I think it's it's they did such a good job with world building and and adding all of the little bits that anyone who, who loves the game um, would enjoy. And uh, just they also added just the humor and the fun. Um, and I think that's and that's the one main thing that uh, I think you should take away from this movie is that it's a perfect example of why of why people play D and D. Um, it's it's just the camaraderie, the getting together with your friends, and um, just have fun with it. And um, and I think I think this uh, movie did a good job with it. Well, I absolutely love it and can't wait to see it. And thank you so much for chatting with the beat. Thank you. So first off, I have to ask, I know yes. that you both have played before, and that's really what inspired how you approach this film. Mm -hmm. So tell me, is there anything in your own personal campaigns that was like too wild that you kind of wanted to add to the movie, but then you didn't? Well, you know, there was something that we did add that was from a can inspired by a campaign that I was in, uh, a location that is just very geographically specific. So it was kind of a dream come true to bring that to life for me. What about for you? You know, my playing was so long ago, it's all a bit of a blur. So uh, it was more the spirit of the thing, you know, that like the improvisational aspect and just like nobody quite knows what's going on except the dungeon master. And we were effectively the dungeon masters in making this movie. And in a funny way, the cast often wasn't totally sure what was going on because it's so complicated what we were shooting. You'd be one sequence that was take, take eight days to shoot in four different spots and locations. And so they kind of had to put themselves in our hands the way you do your dungeon master, you know. You know, Michelle actually mentioned that. She was like, yeah, we had to rely totally on, what did she call you guys, Jonathan? Uh, <laughs> Jonathan, yeah, there's a character yes. in the yep. movie. Yeah. yeah, so she was like, well, that's what we also call them because they're, you know, the two Jonathans or Johns. Um, but also, I just have to ask, which character for you guys, I mean, obviously, like, D&D &D is so robust. Yeah. There is a, a manual of monsters from here to probably the end of the convention center. Yeah. You know, what was the most challenging character to really bring to life in this film? You know, I mean, I think challenging and also gratifying was Chris Pine's character. Uh, not just because he's the lead, but also because he has this kind of 
unflappable optimism in the film and he is someone that despite all the odds stacked against him believes that he can get through it and that was sort of the mentality that we had in approaching this film and shooting it during COVID when we were hit with every possible obstacle it was the, it was the definition of Murphy's Law and yet we got through it and kind of were able to make some the exact thing that we set out to make um, and we just didn't kind of know that exactly what the path would be. Hey, I love it. Well, you know, thank you both so much for taking time to chat with The Beat. We cannot wait to come to the premiere. Cannot absolutely wait to see the film. I mean, it was so hilarious, all of those exclusive clips. So thank you. So thanks so much for tuning in. And special thank you to our sponsor, Mad Cave Studios.